from the time I drove it the first time, I knew it, it's a car I wanted to have and the car I will keep forever. So I've had the car since October 2012. It has about 7,000 kilometers. It feels like a real sports car. Light, balanced brake steering. I'm Rene Nunez. I drive a 2010 Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG. If you recall, the Gullwing was built first as a race car. Then, suddenly, there was demand for it to become a production vehicle. That's why the Gullwing doors came about because of the space frame. Then the SLS, basically, they wanted to capture the era of Mercedes-Benz being dominating in all the Formula One races and all that. SLS is the first car that AMG built from scratch. It didn't come as a Mercedes then sent to AMG to be modified. So basically, it's the same scenario as the first Gullwing, where it was meant to be raced and it was purpose-driven from day one not really built as a road car, then modified after. In fact, the reason they stopped production after five years is they wanted to limit it to 4,000 or so cars. While the old Gullwing uh, was about half of that, there were less people then. So I, I think there will always be some sort of admiration for this car. In the Gullwing doors alone you saw earlier, uh, it's, it's enough to make a statement let alone its weight, its power, its balance. As a Mercedes-Benz enthusiast from way back, 2010 is about 12 years ago. I was quite young, but at the time, of course, any Mercedes enthusiast dreamt of a 1950s 300 SL Gullwing. Except that it was too expensive. And uh, at the end of the day, maintaining such a car in the Philippines with no AC, not meant to be on traffic, I felt that the SLS would be a worthy successor to the car. But then I said, you know, at the price brand new, I don't think I'll be able to buy maybe until five, six years down the road when people start to upgrade and buy newer cars. Funny, I'm close friends with the distributor and the dealer, Felix Ang. The first time his SLS came, he asked me to be in the showroom, drive the car, and I said to myself, I don't think I should wait five, six years in owning an SLS because it's really very much different from how Mercedes-Benz SLs would be, where it would be heavy, it would not really be a sports car, but more of a comfortable cruiser. So that said, the line was filled up of the first dozen cars in tax. This third unit, being the only red after all the silver ones came, was about to be delivered to its owner. So I, I went to the showroom, went to look at it, took pictures of the car. This was about September or late August of 2012. And oh, I'd like my SLS to be red. You know, a month after, I got a call, said, Rene, you like to buy my SLS? I said, how come? He said, I'm not used to a long hood. It's so hard to drive it around Manila. I'm so used to the 911, small, fits anywhere. I said, okay, tried to sell some stuff that I didn't need, bought the car, and the rest is history. The only drawback it has actually is the late shifting as compared to the newer cars of today because of the early model dual clutch transmission. I know they corrected it towards the latter part when they had the Black Series, but this was one of the first models. It's a bit delayed if you want it to shift like a PDK. Hopefully, in the next 50 years or so, there would be room for cars like the SLS, which are really unique cars by itself. Of course, being my dream sports car, Gullwing and all, it's, it's the last to go. It will stay forever as much as I could afford to maintain it. Or as long as we have fuel to put in the car. We'll never know. <laughs>